Hey everyone, it's Synth Designer back again with another video. Today we're going to be looking at my latest song called Moonlight. It's kind of a chill wave, chill synth track that I created. And we're going to go through all the kind of sound design elements, some of the mixing elements, the arrangement, everything you need to learn about chill wave and chill synth and just making your own track. The purpose of this video is really to kind of like inspire you to show you how you can create your own chill wave and chill synth tracks, give you some ideas. Now the main synth that I used today was Diva, but I also use Serum here and there. And we're going to look at all the sounds and kind of what I did to manipulate them. As you can see, there's a lot of automation techniques here as well. And we're just going to have a lot of fun with it all. If you're new to the channel, go to SynthDesigner.com where you'll find plenty of free presets. Unfortunately, I don't have any for Diva right now, but I have a whole bunch of presets for Serum and Vital. And I actually have a preset pack coming up for Serum called Synthwave Essentials Volume 4. And you could download Volumes 1 through 3 right now. 4 will be out very shortly. And the best part is they're all free with no signups required. If anyone wants to support me, you could shoot me a donation, or you can also join my Patreon page for only a couple dollars a month, where I send out 12 to 15 different presets each month uh, around Serum for all my patrons. So why don't we get right into this video? If you've seen some of my previous videos, you'll kind of recognize some of these sounds, and that's because I previewed them in different videos to kind of give you automation techniques, so I'm not going to spend too, too much time on the main synth and the automation, but I will kind of break down things and show you kind of like the main elements of them. So why don't we actually just take a look at the first synth and the pattern. As you can see here, it's a very simple pattern. It's only three chords. Sounds a bit like this. As you can hear, it's super low, and that's because the automation is actually keeping it, uh, the frequency down. As you heard in the intro there, it really opens up, and I have the filter opening up here, and that really kind of builds the sound. And there's a couple other things here. You'll notice that the decay and attack are also automated in a few spots. We'll listen to the rest of the track in little spots here and there later on. But that's one thing I kind of want to mention, and I'll probably do its own video at some point. We think of filters as often the only things to automate, but you can actually automate your ADSR as well, meaning like you can automate the attack to kind of make it less plucky or more plucky and the decay as well to kind of give it a more complete sound, or you can also make it kind of a very plucky sound. Both those things are really cool ways of just adding kind of little differences within your mix. As you can see here, there's also a second pattern coming in here on the ninth bar, and that is the sub bass. Very simple bass, it just follows the same pattern essentially, as you see here. And we're gonna just take a look at the two sounds now. So why don't we start with pattern one and open up Diva. So what do we notice here? As you can hear, again, it's very low. That's because that cutoff is super low. So you can see here that it's modulated by the uh, second envelope here. Both are very similar, have no sustain and kind of a short delay. That is to make it a very plucky sound. And you can hear that reverb and delay here. The wave shapes are this kind of pulse wave and a saw wave as well. So the volume here, you can see that they're both up a little bit. Nothing too complicated here and I have no effects on here. That's because I have the effects through their own dedicated bus. There's synth verb and synth delay because I have a couple different synths here. Just wanted to con connect them all to the same reverb and the same delay actually. So you can see here, and that also kind of gives you more control for anyone who's not familiar, adding your own synth reverb and delay 
on their own mixing track and then routing a synthesizer or your your sound to those mixing track really gives you more control as you can see here i have them kind of middle lower a little bit otherwise you get into the tr the trouble of trying to figure out where it would fit perfectly on the the kind of mixing chain and you don't have as much control this way you can just kind of blend it in a little bit as you can see here i have this kind of on a pretty big sound here i use this little knob to kind of give it more stereo separation the plugin i use is valhalla supermassive a great free track and the thing you do when you have your own mixing or your own uh, reverb bus is to put the mix to 100 percent that way it's just the only the wet signal essentially while this is only the dry signal and then you essentially blend the wet with the dry signal and I did the same here with de delay here. As you can see, wet 100%. I'm just using 3D Delay 3. I find that it works really well. And it kind of gives it that bounce, right? This, this delay. It gives it a nice bounce, a nice kind of warm character uh, and that, that rhythm to it, right? That's what delay does as well when you have it on uh, a good time delay. The other thing is you can see it's on a ping pong mode so it's going back and forth in between your ears. The other thing I should mention especially for reverb is that I have a lot of the highs and lows cut out. With reverb if you have a lot of reverb which we do in this case and you don't cut out some of those lows and some of those highs as well then you will get a lot of muddy mis muddiness in your mix. Let's just A B this for a second here. There's with it off. And then there's with the EQ on. I find it really tightens up the mix. Now you could probably add a little bit more lows. But you really don't want to add too much. And there's enough that comes in the mix later that I felt like I didn't need to add too many of those lows. The other thing I should mention in the synth is a vinyl, a great free plugin. I've used it a whole bunch of times. You may have seen it if you've seen my other videos. I use this warp no knob a lot in different sections of my songs. I find that it's really just a cool way of adding kind of weird detunement and a cool sound to it. As you can see, it's on zero mix right now, and that's because I bring it in in different parts of the song. Uh, in the intro and also in this little breakdown here. I'll just turn it on real quick to give you an example. You could hear it really detunes the sound. And that's a great way of just adding a cool sound to your chill wave tracks. Remember, vinyl is absolutely free and I just use this warp knob, basically nothing else. You can add some kind of lo-fi and dust and scratching as well, and that kind of works in different contexts, but the warp knob for me is what really does it. Last thing I want to mention here, I have some EQ. Obviously, I EQ out a lot of these lows and, uh, a lo and some of these highs. You can see here, this is actually automated as well. The lows I have all the way through until about here, once I start blending in the bass, because I want that kind of thick sound coming through until I get that sub bass. Then I can move out some of those lows. And that's just a good way to introduce kind of your main instrument while then introducing the sub slowly as well. Then I finally just wanted to mention I have Kickstart on here. This just provides some pumping effect. I don't have it on 100% mix. But it's a really cool sound. I could really side change it more probably. It's really up to kind of a personal preference thing. In this case, I didn't really want it too side-chained. I think I've done that enough in different songs. And in this case, I wanted to kind of have the, the main synth playing kind of more straightforward rather than super side-chained. So moving on to pattern two, we have this 
other preset, this is the sub bass, and it's on the zero volume, so we have to turn this up. Super simple. It has two different waveforms here, a triangle and a saw. The triangle is kind of the main part of the sound. The cutoff is super low just because it's a sub. As you can see here, it has a little bit of reverb, just a touch. Very, very little wet amount here. And it's not perfectly up the middle. A lot of subs are up, just up the middle. However, I did have on my master a mid side EQ, so some of those lows have been cut off in terms of the side information. So that kind of makes up for it there in that regard. It's a super simple sub bass, but one I find is very effective in this song. I have a couple things, again, kickstart to give it a little bit of sidechain compression. Uh, a lot of EQ here just because I just want the sub information here. Compression, like in any electronic genre, you want some of that compression. And I have a little bit of distortion here, some saturation with FabFilter Saturn. Now, the Fruity Limiter I use as a compressor or for sidechaining my kick. And my kick is actually on its own kick bus, so I have a couple of kicks that we'll talk about later. But this is attached to this sub and giving it that sidechain compression for it to come through a little bit more. Then we're, I think we're going to play it from here. So we heard another sound coming in, and that's just what we call the bass. Let's just hear this bass as well. So that's pattern three. So as you can hear, it's a really very much a top base. We have eliminated all the sub information essentially to allow it to kind of breathe on its own, the sub, and then we have the base on its own as well. Very simple pattern, almost not even worth mentioning. It's just an F note over and over and over. And let's take a look at the base here. This is actually one of the few instances or maybe the only of Serum I have. This is my preset from Synthwave Essentials Volume 2. Uh, it's called Chunker. And you can hear the filter opening and closing. And that is because of this LFO here. There we go. It just opens and closes on a slow four bar rate. And you can hear it going back and forth in the speakers. If you have headphones or good speakers, it's going left and right. That is from Pancake 2, another free plugin I use a lot. This allows you to kind of automate the panning. Super simple again, a little bit of kickstart, some EQing, and again, you can see here, I took out all the sub information and then kept the base information while also keeping some of these middle to higher frequencies and the, the really high frequencies I eliminated. Don't need them, there's plenty of other places. Plus it's kind of like chill wave, chill synth. You don't need all that high information. But why don't we pick it up from here and we're going to hear a few sections, few more instruments coming in and we'll talk about those as, as well as the drums. So we'll take it to about um, bar 45 or so and then from there there'll be a breakdown and then we'll uh, discuss the rest. So let's, let's take it from here. <laughs>
Okay, so we heard a few elements here coming in and let's break those down. The first that you heard was this ARP. Let's take a look at that. That's pattern 11. As you can hear, it's got that kind of brassy sound to it. And again, we're in Diva here. As you can hear, it's got just that little bit of attack to it. I programmed it to its own delay, but I kept the plate reverb here from Diva. I really liked it. There's a few effects here as well that we'll talk about in a moment. Looking at the waveforms, again, we have kind of a saw wave here in both oscillators one and two. But you can really hear the attack coming through on the second envelope. You can see it's up here and it's modulating the sound, the cutoff. And that attack really gives it that kind of brass horn kind of sound, right? If you think of brass instruments, that's their, their kind of trademark, right? They're, they don't have a very transient attack. They have that, that delayed attack, right? As if someone's blowing into an instrument. And I use this as a basic ARP here. Let's take a look at the pattern itself. Very simple. I kind of want a rhythmic kind of ARP. As you can see, it's going up and down. It's just following the chords simply essentially using a lot of the, the chord notes, but it's going up and down, playing the same note twice, repeated. And with that kind of reverb and delay, it really kind of gives it a little bit more of an interesting effect rather than just playing straight single notes up and down. Looking at the effects, again, as you can guess, some EQ here. I actually EQ'd a lot of the sound. I felt like we didn't need all the highs and we didn't need any of the lows really. The Kickstart 2, a lot more side chaining here. And you can add a little bit more, especially in horn sounds because it's not gonna cut off very much at the beginning. Again, some warping from vinyl, some Saturation again, Pancake 2 again, not very high in the mix, just 15 in the mix, and then some compression again. And we have a fruity send here that is taking it to the delay, as we spoke about before. The next element I want to talk about are the drums, and we're going to just look at all the drums essentially because they're super simple. Chill wave music, chill synth music has pretty simple drums generally, and I don't change the pattern much. There's a few different ones. First one is just a kick drum, and we'll look at the kicks here. I layered two here. There's the deep one. And you can hear this is purely for the click. So this is completely EQ'd out. You can hear it's just the click of it. There's nothing else, no low information, because we get all of that from this one. So we didn't need two huge thumpy kicks. As you can see, there's compression and limiting. I use a lot of compression for these drums. I would say probably a medium amount of compression. I've compressed drums a lot harder. It depends on your taste and limiting to kind of control some of those peaks because, you know, you want to get it to a decent loudness as well. So let's just take a look at the next drum pattern. The first pattern is just a four on the floor. So the fifth pattern is where we get a little bit more information, a little bit more interesting drums. Now, again, super simple and i believe there's one other pattern nope that's it so i actually only use two different patterns for this song and it's really about just developing a groove with the other elements so we have this this hi-hat here and again i use kickstart here and that kind of gives it a groove without it here
So it really depends on what you want to achieve with it. The other element here is this kind of cool, this cool snare drum. It's called Live Ready Mix 70s Fat. I found that it, it's adding a lot of kind of stereo width and just has that great kind of length to it. And that fills out a lot of space, especially when it's a simple drum drum pattern. You, you can fill out a little bit more space with your snare. As you can see here, simple, simple EQing a little bit here and some added saturation. And like with a lot of my other elements, a lot of my drums are connected to a drum bus. And as you see here, cymbals, etc. They have just been routed to this one drum bus. That way I can control everything through here and compress everything together. As well, I can attach it to its own drum reverb. And again, if I were to play this pattern without the reverb, and again, using the EQ to cut off some of those lows, you can hear how really muddy that could be without that EQ. Again, all those things, imagine if we didn't have those EQs on the reverbs, you could really start to imagine what it would sound like and how really boomy and, and muddy it would all sound. One thing I should mention too is I have a lot of these sweeps and kind of these little effects. That's kind of like ear candy. I don't use them super frequently in this song. As you can see, we have this little sweep up here. Super simple, and then I have this little transition kind of thing and then I have this one this nice little reverb sound to it which I really like then I add this one in every once in a while this kind of open hat to add a little bit more interest to the drums if you remember let's just play it here real quick we can hear a few of these transitions <laughs> I just found that open hat to kind of add a little bit more interest to it. So simple drum patterns, but you add that open hat, a little bit of crash, these other kind of reverse symbols here like this one. And there we go. All these things add a little bit of interest. Otherwise you're kind of getting a bland kind of sound. Then we have pattern 10 here, another kind of ear candy element here that really works. Super simple, an extended note, and then this this present diva again. As you can hear, it's kind of an ARP essentially, another program ARP. I did not create this sound. This is just an, a program ARP. I don't remember the exact name. There you go. I just really liked it found that it works well. I only use one note and I think I only use it maybe, yeah, I only use it right there. Again, that's just to add that interesting dimension. Let's listen to that. So there it is. Then we have patterns six and seven here. Let's look at synth two. Essentially, this is a layer synth. Now, when you're getting into layers, you don't want to re be repeating yourself exactly. Now, the, the notes are basically the same. As you can hear, it could get really bright. Depending on the velocity you use there, which is cool. Let's just listen to this on its own. So you can hear, let's just maybe listen to the, both of these together at this point in the song, and we can kind of hear how they work together in harmony. So 
So they do both fill out a lot of space and essentially that is the main chunk of the sound. So if I were to layer anything else, it would have to be really, really kind of in the higher frequencies because you can see here, it's mostly in the kind of mids, just like the other sound. What I did differently here is this is more sustained, whereas synth one is those plucky chords. I could probably take this down a little bit more. Just depending on what I wanted to do with the song, I felt like those two weren't stepping on each other completely. They are very thick, and that's just something to be mindful of when you're layering sounds. Don't want to group too, too many that are super thick. I wouldn't do any more than that. Synth two, again, some vinyl to warp it, compression, kickstart, etc., etc. And it's again sent to a dedicated delay and reverb. Pattern seven here, another kind of unique pattern of only one single note, and that is because it's a, you guessed it, another ARP. And the cool thing is about this one, I automated a couple uh, elements here. So I automated the volume and the frequency. And this comes into play, especially in the breakdown. Everything kind of melds together and starts to work together differently. And we'll hear, so you'll see here, this pattern, when it gets taken down in volume, another element comes up in volume, which is this ARP here, which we just started to hear. Let's take a look quickly at this first melody line. And I would, I call this a melody line, it's very simple. It's a longer melody and I kind of doubled the notes. So essentially I have, these are all essentially the same notes, but one octave up. Let's listen to it on its own. Kind of a synth wavy, kind of brassy kind of sound again, flaming June as they call it. This one again, taking up a lot of kind of frequency space, but played a little bit higher, especially those higher notes really come through nicely. So again, complementing things nicely. It's It comes through a little bit more in the higher spectrum, I find. Whereas the other two synths are more kind of middle to low kind of sound through just the octaves that they're played at. Then finally, we have this pattern here, pattern nine. And it is another ARP. This was ARP 1. This was the first one I created, but it ended up going in this part of the song. Again, super simple. This one, as you can see, does just go up single notes. Let's play the pattern. It's called Retro Appeal. Really cool sound. Again, some very simple waveforms here, some saws here. Again, another cool ARP sound just by holding sounds. I, I made it kind of sound a little bit different. Usually you could hold just a single note down, but I, I really made it kind of like funky and weird sounding by having that pattern. And the other thing I should no, uh, mention again, kickstart is really kind of getting that pump, pumping sound here. I have it on this cool kind of reverb uh, plugin called Soundly Place It. I don't know if you've ever used it, but let's just listen to the difference with it on and off. The cool thing is with this one, Soundly Place It is a cool little free plugin again. What happens essentially is you pick a way that you want it to come out and the space it's in. So here we have a phone loudspeaker in bedroom one. And let's just listen quickly again to how much of a difference it makes when we turn this on and off. So this is on and off. So 
So really a cool little effect here, and there's tons of different presets as well that you can play around with. Moving on here, we have some fruity love filter. Again, this is to kind of give it a little bit more interesting sound again. Let's listen to it this on and off. I just found it kind of gives it a little bit more warmth. And then we have some kind of mid-side EQ a little bit and some compression again. Let's pick it up from this section here. Let's listen to how this comes in and let's pay attention to the automation. So we'll see the kind of one sequencer goes out. Actually, we'll, we'll pick it up from 37. So one sequencer goes out, the other synth uh, layer comes out as well. The melody line finishes while this ARP essentially starts to pick up and gets louder as you'll hear. And then we're gonna break things down and then we're gonna just take it to the end where things just kind of are similar, but we'll, we'll kind of listen to a lot of the automation little clips here and there. And essentially Chill Wave and Chill Synth, this is really where it kind of makes the difference, playing around with these automations and just seeing how they work together. So let's take it from here. So there we have it. That's the end of the song there. I essentially took you through all the different patterns. The only thing we didn't talk about are the different automations, but you can see and hear how they work. I was essentially mixing around the different frequencies while one element goes kind of out of focus, another one comes in, and you could do that with volume automation, filter automation, and then of course, just taking elements and putting them in or taking them out. And that makes all the difference to the arrangement of the song. So when you're thinking about arrangements, think about not necessarily adding new elements all the time. Start thinking about taking things out and automating things as well. Even in this section here, we automated the master frequency and that was just to take things down a notch really to kind of what you could call a low point in the song only to build it back up again. As you heard, there was just tons of elements going in and out during that section until the very end. But that's it. That's the whole track. I hope you really enjoyed listening to this and hope you learned something along the way. Again, this is my track called Moonlight, which is available on all streaming services right now. I really hope that this was useful to you. And let me know down in the comments if you found this useful. If you want to see more kind of diva tutorials, chill synth tutorials, any other tutorials at all, or if you want me to break down certain aspects of the mixing or songwriting or sound design elements of any songs that I've created, I'm always glad to take suggestions. So I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you all next time.